Hello everyone, welcome back. I got in the ammo delivery today and we're going to be talking a little bit today about what ammunition you should be stockpiling for the Brandon Apocalypse. Okay, so, um, you know, and this is the reason why I need a tractor, right? Yeah, I needed to carry my ammunition. Okay, so, um, let's reorganize this a little bit over here. Let's uh, take this guy off here. So that's 9 millimeter. let's just get that off. And we're gonna put these guys up here. Okay. All right. There you go. All right. There you go. Now we can talk about this. Okay, so what we have here, okay, so from here to here. one of those boxes has 250 rounds of 12 gauge okay so that's all shotgun shell you back in your box We got here uh, eight boxes of 12 gauge right in this bucket it is about four feet it's a little bit more than four feet but you know there's a little extra space in those boxes so I'm gonna cut it back I'm gonna say about four feet so four feet long by about 16 inches high okay so that's 2,000 rounds of shotgun shell okay by comparison I've got two little boxes here, 1,000 rounds each, okay? That's 2,000 rounds of 9 millimeter, right? So you can see how much more compact the 9 millimeter is to the 12 gauge. Now, the interesting thing is that these boxes up here, each of these weighs about 25 pounds. It's 24, but whatever, let's say 25 pounds. Each of these weighs about 20 pounds, I think maybe 21 pounds, but let's say 25 pounds versus 20 pounds. So in addition to the shotgun shells taking up a lot of space, right, almost four feet going across by 16, 16 inches high. Um, you know, there's also the issue of weight, okay? Um, you know, like I said, each of these boxes weighs 25 pounds. Each of these boxes weighs about 20 pounds. So obviously this is a lot heavier. It takes up weight. Uh, it, takes, it's a, it has a lot more weight and it also takes up a lot more space. Uh, over here, I've got two boxes of 223, right? Uh, so again, same deal. Uh, if you compare these, compare the two two three side by side with the nine, with thousand rounds, they're about you know this, the two two three is a little bit bigger, uh, but they're about the same, just a little bit bigger. Um, so that's the problem with shotgun shells; they take up a lot of space, and they're very heavy. Uh, the two two three and the nine millimeter is very compact. So for, for those reasons alone, um, you you want to stockpile more two two three and you know, five, five, six, uh, and and nine millimeter. Now there is a place for the shotgun shells. Okay, now, so here's the thing: why would we want to have shotgun shells? A lot of people associate shotguns with self-defense. I, I think that shotguns. I've done other videos on this. I, I think that that using a shotgun or, or shotgun ammo for self-defense, um, aside to the fact that it has a, a much more limited, you know, range as far as distance, um, it's not efficient in terms that. I don't want to be burning through this ammo, right? Because chances are that you guys don't have 2,000 rounds of shotgun shells, right? Uh, but, you but you know, it, because it takes a lot of weight and it takes up a lot of space and it's heavy. But you might have 2,000 2, rounds of 9mm, right? And it's easy to build up to 4,000 rounds or 8,000 rounds of 9mm just because it's more compact. Um, so, uh, how, why, would I want to, how, why would I want to use shotgun shells at all? Uh, the only purpose in my opinion, for using shotgun shells, and these are all bird shot, right, uh, is specifically to, sh to, to hunt a fast-moving target, uh, like birds that are flying in the air, uh, or let's say rats that are running, right? So in, in, a, in a, you know, World War III type of situation, that is how I would want to use the shotgun shells. I wouldn't want to waste them in any other way because I'm going to have a limited capacity of this, right? Because, I mean, I mean you might look and say, wow, you got 2,000 rounds. Well, 2,000 rounds is nothing for me. Okay. Um, you know, I have a lot more of this. I want to use that other stuff and, and conserve 
conserved the shotgun shells, which I don't have as much. Okay? Um, so uh, now, obviously, with the with the two two three slash five five six, um, there's really not much debate there as far as the benefits of that. If it's it's small, it's compact. You know, you can pretty easily hit targets out to two hundred yards. Uh, you can get out to five hundred yards, right? You know, depending on how, you know with a little bit of holdover or with you know um, you know. Uh, if, if you have you know marks on your scope or whatever, but you can you can get out to 500 yards uh, with 223. Definitely work inside. You know you can definitely easily work uh, inside at 200 yards. Now, how about the nine millimeter? Okay, what what place does the nine millimeter have in a uh, shit hit the fan type of situation? You know, World War Three. Um, well, isn't traditionally people have only thought of nine millimeter um, as something that goes into your pistol. Uh, and basically the pistols are back up to your rifle, so you would not expect to be doing a whole lot of shooting with 9mm. However, with the popularity of the pistol ca uh, caliber carbines, right, like the Palmetto PX9s that I have done many videos on, uh, I see another another purpose uh, for the uh, uh, for the 9mm, and that's to feed the pistol caliber carbine. Now, why use that at all? Why not use, uh, use the 223? Well, here's the thing. Uh, to be the 9mm uh, in a pistol caliber carbine is an ideal hunting round for small dog sized animals, right? So, yeah, I mean, got lots of 22 for, sh for hunting my rats, you know, and stuff like that, right? Uh, but for something like bigger, like a, like a dog, um, you wouldn't want to use, two, two, you know, 22, and I wouldn't want to waste my 223. So, the 9mm, which is even smaller and more compact, okay? Uh, I think is a better choice. Now, why am I thinking? Why am I thinking of dog-sized animals? Okay, well let's let's envision um, let's envision a World War III type of situation um, where food is scarce. Okay, um, basically there's going to be a huge die-off from starvation, right? Uh, you know, the, what, I'm going to talk about the starvation part in a little bit, but there'll be, there's going to be a huge die-off from starvation primarily. And there's going to be lots of corpses, and dogs are going to turn wild, and they're going to start eating those corpses. Okay, if you, if you go to, you know, you go to war zones, that's one of the things that that you'll see, right? You know, dogs eat the corpses, they multiply. Rats will do the same, and they multiply fast. And now the dogs become a food source. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit more about the the the, the reality of world war worldwide starvation. Uh, in a World War III type of situation. Okay. Um, here's the thing. You see this tractor right over here, right? So, and you guys might have seen a couple of videos where I do a little bit of, uh, you know, home farming. Okay. This machine um, runs on diesel. Okay. Without diesel, I can't grow any food. Okay. If I can't grow any food, I, you know, let's say I can't grow any corn. Well, I, I can't feed my chickens. Okay. So it's not enough to say, hey, you got chickens. Well, what am I going to feed the chickens if I can't grow corn? Well, I'm not going to be able to feed my chickens, okay? Um, so, despite having a machine that can grow food, without fuel to go into the machine, I can't grow any food, okay? So now I'm going to look for alternatives, okay? So in a World War III type of situation, there's only going to be two food sources, right? Uh, and it's not going to be out there in the forest somewhere, right? Because the deer are all going to disappear. There's not much that grows naturally on trees, right? So the two food sources, all right, is number one going to be human meat, and number two is going to be the animals that also eat human meat, and that, that's going to be the dogs, the wolves, the coyotes, those kind of animals. Now, why, why am I saying human meat? Well, listen, you look throughout history, right? There, look up. There's a video called uh, Cannibal Island Siberia, all right? So there was a situation where Stalin uh, basically created an island prison. Uh, didn't feed the people, and it did not take them long before they started eating each other, okay? And there's been several, there's been many cases like that through history when people get, when people starve, okay, they eat each other, okay? Rats do the same thing, okay? Um, so that, that's just a reality. I mean, I mean, if people get hungry enough, not all people, maybe you are not willing to eat other people, but other people are willing to eat you, okay? So keep that in mind when, when we're talking about cannibalism here. Um, now, in a World War III type of situation, and this is, you know, I, I never thought that this, you know, after the fall of the Soviet Union, I didn't think we'd ever really be talking about World War III again, all right? But 
uh, given what's going on right now with uh, Russia, Ukraine, and the way the United States has really been provoked, in my opinion, provoked Ukraine into this war situation with, with Russia and how we're basically supplying the, the, the Ukrainians to kill Russians. And that's the same as us killing them directly, right, in reality. So I, I, there's a possibility that at some point the Russians may look at this situation and say, hey, you know what, there's, what's the difference if the Americans are killing us directly or if they're paying somebody else to kill us? You know what, if they're going to be killing us, we're going to start killing them back, okay? So that, that's, a, that's a possibility, okay? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying it's a possibility. So in, a, in that type of a situation, what are they going to target, okay? You know, they're not going to target the buildings, right? That's not strategic. They're going to target, you know, they know that in this country we have, a, 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 you know, a, pro, a, a fuel shortage or supply problem with fuel shortage. They're going to target uh, the places where the, where the uh, oil is, is basically pumped up and stored, um, and they're going to base it because they know that by shutting off the fuel supply in this country, uh, that is going to stop these machines from running. And then you're going to end up in the, the country is going to end up in a very desperate situation. Uh, and then e each side is hoping that when they create that desperate situation, the people will turn against their own government. Um, so both, both sides had that mentality. The Russian know where the Russians know where all of our oil fields are. We know where all of their oil fields are, right? So basically, the missiles are going to go like this, and they're going to go into and attack each of the oil fields. Oil fields are going to be destroyed. Uh, the fuel reserves, wherever they are, those are going to be destroyed. These machines don't run. You can't you can't grow fuel. You can't you can't grow food. And if you can't grow food, the you know because it's not like okay, all of a sudden we're going to okay, we're just going to eat cattle. We're just going to eat chickens. The the, the, how you feed the chickens and the cattle on such a large scale, right? You, that's what the food that's grown. So we, so in a World War Three situation, the most likely thing that's going to happen is that there's going to be a mass die-off from starvation. Okay, this this world at this point, there's enough people on this planet that you cannot naturally feed these people, right? There's so many people on this planet. You can't just have like small farms to feed these people. The only way we feed the whatever 8 billion people that we have is with industrialized food production, okay? And once that industrialized food production is targeted, all right, uh, there's no way that you can feed all these people uh, and there's going to be a mass start, there's going to be a mass die off from starvation. Um, and, you know, what's going to happen is you're going to, you will have bodies and corpses. You're going to have certain animals that are going to start eating those corpses and start multiplying. Uh, and that's going to be dogs, coyotes, those type of animals. And that's where your 9mm is really useful for hunting those type of animals so that you can survive. Okay, so I'd rather be using 9mm to hunt a wild dog than using my precious 223 that can, you know, reach out to a longer distance. Okay, so this is, this is for two-legged varmints. That's for the four-legged ones, okay? Um... So, uh, a, a way for you guys to think about stockpiling ammunition. Uh, sh the shotgun ammo has, a, in my opinion, has a very limited use. Basically, for birds that are actually in flight, okay, um, or rabbits that are running. Uh, but if if, I, if I'm in a field where I know that the rabbits are going to stop and eat and they're going to stay still for a while, I, much, I would much rather... Uh, hunt them with a 22 than with the shotgun ammo because I know I'm only going to have a limited supply of this, right? You know, like I, said, I got 2,000. You know, when I buy shotgun ammo, you know, I might I might buy 2,000 rounds at a time. When I buy 22 ammo, I mean, I buy 10,000 rounds at a time, right? So I got a lot more 22. Um, I'd rather be using 22 than using my shotgun ammo. You know, I'd rather be using 9 millimeter than using my 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 uh, 223 slash 556. Um, so a couple of things for you guys to think about. Hope this information was useful and entertaining. Uh, and a big part of this is entertainment. Okay, a big part of what I do is provide entertainment for you guys. Um, so we got a whole bunch of ammo here to play with now. <laughs> okay, uh, so um, a lot of this ammo is going to be for me to play with. I'm also going to be using this to do videos. Uh, for my friend Matt over at the CRS Firearms, who is currently a political prisoner who's being uh, persecuted, right? Um, so, so um, it's it's my uh, it's my pleasure and honor to uh, be able to help him out. Uh, he's been uploading a lot of my videos, um, and I don't monetize any of my videos in my channel uh, because it's because I'm really not interested in 
um, in, in getting any money from YouTube, right? Uh, and I don't want to personally put myself in a position where they can control me uh, by telling me which video they're going to monetize. And which, so, you know, I just rather not deal with that aspect altogether. However, uh, the, Matt is able to use these videos uh, to, you know, help fight his way through this uh, persecution that he's currently going through. So uh, make sure you guys are clicking on, you know, watching the videos over there. Uh, because that that's helping him out a lot. So th again, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you all soon. Uh, and also, I got a channel on Odyssey. That's O D Y S E E. That's an uncensored platform. Uh, my name, my channel name over there is Pocono Tactical. So also find me over there in case I disappear from here. You can find me over there. I also got uh, on YouTube. I've got three channels. I got uh, uh, Safa. I got Pocono Shooting, and I got Absolute Guns. And the reason is because they're constantly giving me strikes and demerits and, you know, all sorts of abuse. So this way I, I just keep moving around to different channels as they, you know, as they suspend one and do this and that and the other. So, again, thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.